Welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to show you how to use the OCAM platform to perform the full cycle of QZR research in only about 20 minutes. We will build a set of models that identify potential mutagens according to the AMAS test. To start the tutorial we open a web browser and go to OCAM.eu. The registration on OCAM is free and open for anyone. Please feel free to register a new user to have access to the full set of features, like manage your datasets, build your QZR models and share them with the community. Now we are going to log in with a pre-registered user. A typical QZR research usually starts with collecting the experimental data. We have prepared a dataset with 6,500 compounds with the AIMS test measurements. We are going to upload these records into the OCAM database using the batch upload facility. OCAM supports uploads from Excel or SD files in a predefined format. We have prepared an Excel file with the structures encoded in SMILES notation and the AIMS test result in a separate column. Additionally, it is also possible to provide the name of the chemical compounds. Now we are going to upload this file into OCAM. On this screen we can see the basic preview of the uploaded file. If your column has been recognized by OCAM, it will be displayed in green color. In this case all columns have been correctly recognized. In case if a column has not been recognized, you can remap it to one of the recognizable columns. Uh, the column name in an Excel sheet should match to an existing property in OCAM. Otherwise, you can manually select the corresponding property from the list. However, OCAM is extensible, so you can easily introduce a new property as well. Now we are ready to proceed with the data upload. This intermediate page outlines the problems that needs to be resolved before starting the upload. The system tells us that we didn't provide the source of information. Normally we select a scientific publication where the data has been published. This is possible to do individually for each row in Excel sheet in a separate column. Here for simplicity we will select an article previously created specifically for this tutorial. After that, we are ready to proceed with upload. The upload can take a while, and for 6000 of compounds, the estimated time is about 15 minutes. After some waiting, the preview of the records is shown on the screen. These records are not yet uploaded. Here you can see whether there are any errors in parsing chemical structures, any missing data, or any duplicated records. Uh, in total, we have 6506 valid records and one internal duplicate. We can manually review the structures and the supplementary data and decide to upload them, to skip them, or in case of any apparent errors, uh, we can correct them in an Excel file and re-upload it again. If we are satisfied with the preview, we are ready to confirm the upload. On this step, the records will be actually saved to the database. Again, we have to wait while the data has been uploaded. After some waiting, there comes an upload over your screen. Now our records have been successfully uploaded to the OCAM database. Our new records can be accessed in the so-called Compound Properties browser, where we can see all the detailed information about our records. Here we can filter records by uh, different criteria, by property, by article, molecular properties, substructure, molecular names, etc. In this browser you can see your private records as well as the records made public by other users. If we open the compound property browser from scratch, we can gain access to more than 800,000 records. The records available in the Compound Property Browser can be added to so-called baskets, which are simple reusable sets of records. The baskets are typically used as training or validation sets for development of QZR models. You can select all filtered records or select them individually and add them to a basket later. 
In the browser baskets uh, we can already see one entry. Our uploaded data have been automatically added to this basket. In the basket profile it is possible to perform multiple operations. For example, to copy a basket, to rename it, split it randomly, etc. Now we will give a more meaningful name to our basket. Now we are going to split the basket randomly into two parts for using them later as a training and validation set. In this dialog we specify the names of the split baskets, we will use the default names provided here, and we also provide the percentage of records in the validation set. In this case we will use the default 20%. After that we see two new baskets appeared in the list. And later we are going to use these baskets for development of a QZR model. We will now develop a QZR model based on our newly uploaded data. The model creation wizard will take you through the necessary model configuration steps. At this first page we select a training set for our model. The training set can be any previously prepared basket of records. For our demonstration model, we will select a training set basket that we have just created. We also add our second prepared basket as a validation set. Below we can see the list of available machine learning methods, which include neural networks, different implementation of linear regression, wrappers around VEC implementation of decision trees, and some other machine learning methods. We will leave the ASNN method selected as it is a good default choice for the first time modeling of unknown data. At this page we also select the validation strategy. Available options include no validation, cross validation and bagging validation. For our purposes we will use the default five-fold cross validation protocol and proceed to the next step. At this step we select the molecule preprocessing options. We keep the default settings and move to the next step. Here we have a possibility to select the required descriptor sets. Our software integrates a wide variety of modern descriptors, both established state-of-the-art solutions and experimental implementations. The descriptors that require uh, 3D optimization of molecules are marked with a 3D label. A lot of descriptors have additional configuration options, such as maximum fragment size and so on. Remarkably, it is possible to use experimental conditions and predictions given by other model as descriptors. For the purpose of this tutorial, we keep the default selected descriptor blocks E-State and AllocPS. And we continue to the next step. Here we configure the unsupervised descriptor selection. We can eliminate redundant descriptors with different approaches. For example, by considering descriptor variants, cross-correlation, PCA components, and so on. It is also possible to manually select the desired descriptors or even upload a textual list of these descriptors obtained from some other description selection tool. We will keep the default values and proceed. Next, we configure the selected machine learning method. This step is specific to the selected method. For neural network, we can select the training method, the number of neurons, number of iterations, the size of neural network ensemble, and so on. The default settings are good for the majority of cases, and therefore we make no changes here and proceed to the final step. Here we give our model a name, then we select the task priority and start the calculation. We land on a waiting screen that interactively displays the status of the model building process. Since the model building may take minutes or even hours, we opt to fetch result later from the pending task browser. Uh, the pending task browser is a special page with a list of all your currently running tasks. At this page we see all the pending tasks by their type, name or status. The finished tasks are highlighted in green. As we are waiting for our model to finish, we can refresh the list of the latest statuses. The list can be also refreshed automatically every minute. 
Once your task is done, it will appear green in the list. Effectively, our model uh, took us about one hour to calculate, which has been cut out of this tutorial. After that, we fetch our task. A new tab opens and we see the model profile. Here we should briefly review the model performance and decide whether we want to save or discard it. The profile includes different performance statistics for both training and validation sets. It also has confusion matrices and a short summary of configuration options used to produce this model. And we are satisfied with the performance and we decide to save this model. After saving, the model becomes available in the model browser. This browser lists all the publicly available QZR models, built by you or other users. Each model has its profile. As mentioned before, the profile contains the basic information about the model and its statistical parameters. The public identifier represents a direct link to the model profile, in case you want to share your model with your colleagues or collaborators. It is also possible to export individual descriptor values, predictions, molecular structures, etc. for all compounds in the model. We open the export dialog, where we select the required information and export it in Excel, CSV or SDF formats. And we open our file in Excel. Now we are going to apply our new model to predict new molecules. We open the model browser Then we select our model from the list and proceed with the calculations. The model can be applied to a single molecule as well as to a set of molecules. The typical scenario is to draw a molecule or to provide an SD file with compound structures. We have prepared an exemplary SD file with 10 molecules. We are starting the prediction task. In case if prediction takes too long, we can fetch this task later from the list of pending tasks. When the task is ready, we fetch it and we can see the prediction results. It is very important that ACAM allows to estimate the prediction accuracy for each compound individually. It is also possible to export results to an Excel sheet, a CSV file or an SD file similarly to the export of the model sets. So, today we have learned how to perform the typical steps of a QZI research with OCAM. We have learned how to upload the experimental data into OCAM. Then we have learned how to create and manage your data sets. Then we have built a simple QZR model for AMS test. And finally, we have applied this model to get the predictions for new compounds. This is only a small part of the OCAM functionality. In future tutorials, we will show you how to create hundreds of models with one click, create consensus models, develop models for several properties simultaneously, and many, many more features. See you again in the next tutorials. Goodbye.